never buy these bags new at full price. They aren't going to hold their value well and there are some huge savings to be had by buying pre-loved. By watching this video today, you can avoid some really expensive mistakes. Hey everyone, my name is Steph. If you are new to this channel and love designer bags and luxury in general, you are in the right place. Make sure you join us by hitting the subscribe button and the bell down below. Not all designer bags are created equally. Now I did a video recently on designer bags that I don't think hold their value very well. And I thought I would do a follow on video because I still get quite a few people ask me over on Instagram, should I buy this new? Where is the best place to buy pre-loved? I'm gonna tackle that second question in a video very, very soon. But yeah, I thought I would share actually some of the popular styles of designer bags that I definitely wouldn't buy brand new. If you aren't following me already, join me on Instagram. My handle is at handbag underscore holic. I absolutely love to hear from you guys what are you purchasing next? What are you planning? How are you finding your designer bags? Um, yeah, it's great to chat. So make sure you join me there as well. If you've seen my channel before, you might already know that I absolutely love buying pre-loved and a lot of my designer bag collection is actually pre-loved and due to that I have been able to accelerate my designer bag collection massively because I have made some huge savings. Now when it comes to identifying a designer bag that's worth buying pre-loved instead of brand new, I think there is a bit of a formula you can apply to this. The number one thing you need to look at is how popular the designer bag is. Has it been really popular? If it has been really popular before, chances are you are going to be able to find one on the pre-loved market. The more saturated the pre-loved market is with a particular style of bag is going to bring down the price that you are going to pay for the bag, making it even better to buy pre-loved. The second factor at play is how limited the bag actually is. Uh, this kind of goes for other luxury pieces as well. So I'm just thinking a limited edition Louis Vuitton, uh, maybe a Louis Vuitton cap you seen in a particular colorway that's only out for one season, Chanel bags that are really popular such as like the iridescent styles of bag. These are limited, they sell really quickly, and because they didn't make a whole lot of these particular designer bags, their resale value is probably actually going to be higher than what they retailed at. So it needs to be a bag that I would describe as not seasonal, more a staple kind of bag that the brand has and has been running for many, many seasons. You are much more likely than to be able to find one on the pre-loved market and make huge savings. Now, if you don't have time to browse all the pre-loved websites every single week to try and find the best deals, and that means you miss out on some of the best pre-loved finds, then I've got a solution for you today. I'm really excited to be launching this. This is the Luxury Hunters newsletter. Uh, you can sign up by clicking the link in the description box down below or heading over to the Handsbagholic website and clicking on the Luxury Treasure Hunters button and signing up. This newsletter is currently only available to people in the US and UK. I will eventually open it up around the world. But what this means is every single week, what is going to land in your inbox is an extended extensive list of the best pre-love finds, the rare things that you can't find anymore, the best deals that I find in terms of price, and also brand new bags that have just gone into sale. So it's going to save you a lot of time and money. So make sure you sign up to the Luxury Treasure Hunters newsletter. The first bag that I would not buy brand new, unless I really, really liked a particular colorway and style, is the Givenchy Antigona bag. The Antigona bag from Givenchy has been popular for quite a long time now, many, many years. I think it's a great bag because of its structure. You can get them in different sizes. So I have a mini one here. I have in the past as well had a small and also a medium. I have purchased my Givenchy Antigonas pre-loved because you can make huge savings. So like I said, this one is actually a limited edition one, um, but if you're just going for a plain black or maybe a nude kind of color, they aren't really seasonal. They are staples from the brand. They've been around for many, many years, which means there are a lot on the pre-loved market. So there are some huge savings to be had. So I recently, I had the Givenchy Antigona in the medium size. I had it in the black smooth leather. I believe these retail now around 1,600, 1,700 pounds, uh, so probably over $2,000 in the US. I posted on my Instagram that I was selling some bags and I actually sold uh, my Antigona Medium and I sold it for 650 pounds. So based on retail, that is a huge saving and that price wasn't completely like hugely low. Like on eBay, if you go on there, 650 for a Medium Antigona 
is about right. It probably is on the cheaper side of things. I think you can make huge savings on these. Now, just a quick rule of thumb before we go any further into this video, if you are buying anything pre-loved, always get your bag authenticated. I will link to the best authentication services up here uh, and I'll pop a link in the description down below for you. So you take pictures of the bag and then send it off to professionals who just confirm they double check serial codes, materials, um, stitches, all this kind of really intricate detail to tell you whether they think the bag is authentic or not. I always get them for any of my pre-loved purchases. The second bag that I would try to purchase pre-loved is actually a Chanel bag, the Chanel boy bag. I have one here. This is a black uh, old medium style boy bag with antique gold hardware and it's absolutely stunning. This one, I don't even know what this retailed at, but the boy bag, just standard leather version of the boy bag now, they retail, I believe, at 4,380 pounds, around that amount. I might have be slightly off, but I know it's definitely around that. And with all the price increases recently, they just keep going up and up. But because the boy bag has been around for many, many years from Chanel, this goes for the classic flap and stuff like that as well, you know, popular bags that people have purchased over the years, you can find them on the pre-loved market. Now, the only thing I would say, like with Chanel, is that you get limited edition pieces. So this one is, and they also change colors. So some seasons there might be a black available and some there won't be. And Chanel do this to help maintain the price of their bags, but you can still make some good savings even though these bags are expensive. So say that this bag retails at just over 4,000 pounds now here in the UK. I got this one pre-loved and I paid, I believe it was 3,000 pounds for this bag. It's black, it's gold, it's very kind of staple. It's going to go with everything. Um, it is fur, so obviously it's not going to wear as well as leather. You might be paying a bit more for a popular color and a leather version. There are limited edition ones that will sell for even more than retail, for example. But for me, 3,000 pounds, that is a huge saving. And one of the things that I will say about this particular boy bag is, some boys that that price is just for a standard boy bag but this one here uh, let me just show you inside actually has chanel on a gold plaque there and the ones that don't have a leather tab in but have this plaque instead it generally means they sold for a premium so these are seen as like premium uh, boy bags from chanel so i was very happy to get this for three thousand pounds and i look at this as well over a thousand pound saving the third bag and i have just alluded to this but the chanel classic flat bag so many people really want the classic flap and with all the price increases recently they have massively increase the price oh, just over the last year on the classic flap. I believe Chanel are really trying to make this bag very exclusive. And I think we can see even more limited numbers and just more price increases on this bag. Cause I think they want to keep it as their kind of holy grail, like what the Birkin bag is to Hermes. But on the pre-loved market, the pre-loved market has definitely gone up since the price of the classic flap has gone up, but you can still make some really good savings on a Chanel classic flap. The thing with Chanel is there are a lot of fakes out there, so I completely understand why people are really nervous to part with so much money for a Chanel bag. You need to do your homework, know who you're buying from, and make sure you get the bag authenticated. Never, if you can help it, bank transfer any money to anyone. Uh, never pay Western Union. Make sure you are protected through a credit card, through PayPal, through eBay all these services that can offer you a level of protection. It's worth just double checking that as well before you send any kind of money to anyone when it comes to pre-loved. But yeah, you can make a few thousand pounds like what I did with my boy bag. You can do the same thing on a classic flat. The next bag is a popular bag from YSL. This is the college bag and a few other styles from YSL. So the reason that I like Saint Laurent bags, especially pre-loved, is that a lot of their styles of bags have actually been on the market for quite a few years and people buy them, maybe use them, find they don't work for them or they're just having a clear out and then they sell the bag. Now the college bag is a really popular style of Saint Laurent bag. It is super handy. It's got a pocket on the back and just a simple opening and you can definitely get some pre-loved bargains on the college bag. Maybe not to the extent you can the Givenchy Antigona because I feel like YSL right now is definitely becoming more popular, especially as people start to move away from Chanel as it's becoming more and more expensive. But yeah, for me, if I was looking to buy a college bag, I would definitely look to get one pre-loved. Bag number five that I would not buy brand new is another YSL bag. This is the YSL Toy Lulu bag. The Lulu bag seems to be having a moment right now. Everyone seems to want the Lulu bag. 
I'm specifically saying this about the toy. The toy is the smallest version. It comes with this detachable crossbody strap. And I feel like everyone kind of went crazy for the toy bag and now people are starting to sell them off. I am definitely not seeing as many like the small, the medium and the large on the pre-loved market. The small is probably the most highly desired size. Um, you can't make a, a huge saving there because they're definitely, I think a lot of people right now are holding onto these bags. But when it does come to the toy bag, because of the price increases on this recently, when I first started looking at the toy, not that long ago, maybe like six months ago, it was under a thousand pounds. I think they've since put it up by about 200 pounds recommended retail price. So now there's still this influx of toy bags on marketplaces like eBay, and you can definitely pick up some fantastic bargains. Number six is the Louis Vuitton Capucines bag. I really like the Capucines bag from Louis Vuitton. This comes in numerous sizes. You've got the new mini sizes. You've got the BB, which is what size this one is. You've got the PM, you've got the MM, which is the largest size. Now. The cap, you see, you can make some great savings on this bag, mostly because the recommended retail price for this is very high. It's one of Louis Vuitton's most expensive bags. And this leather one, for example, I believe these now, the BB size retails at just over 4,000 pounds. It was this, the Capucines bag was hit really hard by the last Louis Vuitton price increase. And we haven't seen a price increase on the Capucines for, I would say a year prior to the last uh, price increase. I document all the price increases, by the way, on the Handbagholic website. I'll pop a link up here for you and down below. So for Chanel and Louis Vuitton, every time there's a price increase, I go and update the before and after price as well. So you can just see which bags were affected. I did get this one pre-loved and I made, based on recommended retail, well over a thousand pounds saving on buying this one pre-loved. I would say nearly one and a half thousand pounds I saved by buying this pre-loved. The thing that I will say about the Capucines is this is a bit harder to buy pre-loved because Louis Vuitton do bring it out in limited edition colors and styles. You know, there's some really one, beautiful ones now with like pearl logos on the front. And because they are so expensive in the first place, there's definitely not loads of them on the pre-loved market. So I have been looking for this bag in the Galay colour with the snakeskin handle for so long. I think I've seen one and unfortunately I'm, I missed out on it. So yeah, if there is a particular colourway and or limited edition style that you do want, you might just have to buy brand new. But if I could like help it, I'm really, really trying to find the Galay BB or a mini pre-loved and to make a bit of a saving because I do think the Cappy Scenes is a big investment. The seventh bag is the Lady Dior bag. I see this bag come up quite a bit on uh, pre-loved sites and eBay. If you are looking for a leather version of this bag, there's no way that I would buy a brand new one. Absolutely no way because when you look at the pre-loved market, the prices are so different to retail, like so much cheaper than retail. I have seen full leather versions, black and gold as well. This is like standard color combinations. I have seen them listed at less than 2000 pounds. They are well over, I believe 4,000 pounds here in the UK. So less than half the price. For me, if I was looking at a Lady Dior, unless it was like a limited edition version, there is one that I do really like at the minute, which I believe is the part of the astrology collection. I do really, really like that. And I know that this will be really hard to come by on the pre-loved market, but if it comes to a leather version, 100% pre-loved. Bag number eight is the Dior saddle bag. Now the saddle bag again is a classic from Dior, but the saddle bag is interesting because I feel like a lot of people see pictures of this bag, really, really like it, then they get it and in real life it just doesn't work out. And I think the shape of the bag puts people off. So I bought a vintage one. I think I paid about 800 pounds for it. It was in like a tan color. It was really beautiful with gold hardware, which I have since sold because I just felt like the, the shape of the bag wasn't quite right for me. Um, I didn't like it. I prefer the newer ones, but still, same thing with Dior and the Lady Dior is that in terms of what they retail at, they are expensive. And I do think people buy them and then they're like, wait a minute, I'm not using this bag or I'm not sure about the shape anymore or the size, the opening inside of the bag. So yeah, if I ever buy another saddle bag, I would definitely buy pre-loved and make that big saving. The next bag is the Balenciaga City bag. 
I like this bag in terms of it looks quite chic, quite relaxed, quite out there. I can imagine Kate Moss having this bag. I don't know why. Just that kind of understated look. It's not overly logoed. Tassels hanging off it. It's quite cool. But again, this one has been around from Balenciaga for many, many years and it has been quite fairly popular. So there are absolutely loads, I would say, on the pre-loved market when it comes to the Balenciaga city bag. So for me, they're also, when I went to Bista Village, in Balenciaga, they did have the city bag in there. I don't know like, if it was like an old version of the bag, because I know there is a newer one out now. But again, there is some quite big savings to be had buying it brand new from Balenciaga from the store, the outlet store in Bista Village here in the UK, which again, when uh, brands sell their bags at discounted prices at outlet stores, if they're in the outlet stores for quite a while, and I believe the city bag has been, and there are lots on the resale market, and because people paid less for them, they're willing to let them go at an even lower price. So I would never buy this bag brand new. Bag number 10 is the Fendi baguette bag. The baguette bag has been around for quite some time from Fendi. I believe Fendi is having a moment, similar to YSL right now, where people are really starting to look for alternatives to Louis Vuitton and Chanel. And I definitely think Fendi, is up there in terms of their fashion more influencers more celebrities are wearing fendi right now and more people are looking at the baguette bag but like i said it has been out for quite a long time so i would definitely opt for a vintage version or you know one that someone is selling pre-loved because there is quite a lot out there you won't be able to get one of the new styles most likely for a huge saving but for me, because Fendi in general, I don't find has a fantastic resale value, that is exactly why I would buy pre-loved. And finally, the last bag that I would definitely buy pre-loved is the Gucci Marmont bag. So the Gucci Marmont collection does span quite a few different bag styles. Um, I do understand that, but the Marmont flap, the Marmont camera bag, Gucci, as we all know, the Marmont belt, I have one of those, has been so popular. It's been probably one of Gucci's most popular styles of bags. You can still buy them now. They do have some limited edition ones, but in terms of like black and gold, pink and gold, they've been around for quite a long time now. And because it's been so popular, there are definitely quite a few on the pre-loved market. Now, some of the better colorways, such as pink and gold, definitely still fetch not a million miles away from retail, especially if they're in good condition, but there's some huge savings to be had on the less popular colors and uh, styles of bags. So for me, to be honest, most Gucci bags in general, because they don't have this exclusivity that the other brands have, such as Louis Vuitton and Chanel, it feels like anyway, it feels like Gucci is much more accessible. I would head straight to eBay or Vestiaire or other pre-loved websites to buy my Gucci bags. Like I said at the start of this video, if you want to save yourself a lot of time, let me do the hard work for you. You can sign up to the Luxury Treasure Hunters email by clicking the link down below and you're going to be receiving an email in your inbox jam-packed with some unicorns and best finds to save you a lot of time and make sure you don't miss out on some brilliant deals. Let me know in the comments down below which bags have you purchased pre-loved in your collection or are you considering purchasing pre-loved to make a big saving? I absolutely love to hear from you. So please do get involved in the conversation down below. Make sure you don't go anywhere because coming up next, I will link my latest video release here for you. And in this video here, I'm going to be sharing with you five designer bags that I would not buy again and why. 